unequivocally and to say that separation, which is the only solution to this heinous ethnic violence as allegedly claimed by the tribal cookie Joe people may invite more and more chores and cleavages and may create problematic towards the majority people of this state. Some allegedly claim that no other solution of the problem is possible. Some palliative may serve the purpose temporarily, but unless the problem, the population commission of all the communities residing in the state must be established so as to enable the state to identify the illegal or legal migrants or immigrants in the state. Until and unless there is a population commission it would not be possible to identify all those illegal or legal migrants and Ill immigrants. Number three, the territorial integrity of the state of Manipur should be maintained at all cost. Number four, no separate administration should be allowed at all cost in response to demand of any particular ethnic community. Any workable disruptions <laughs> while concerning the state's territorial integrity should not be allowed. However, the tribal Cookie Joe community strongly allegedly claim that the recent state sponsor ethnic cleansing program has irrefutably shown both to the nation and to the world that the tribals in particular, the Cookie Joe people and the Maitis can no longer live together peacefully under one administration. Bias and selective reporting should be erased at the root level and an in-person reporting and information should be broadcasted for the general good of people and healthy journalism. It is the need of the hour to be amenable in all the perspective regarding the reporting of this ethnic riot. Reporting should not be done to suit the interests of one particular community, but it should be engaged applicably in the interests of the communities of the state of Manipur. As the national security is at stake, all the civil society organizations, retired civil and defense personnel, academicians, intellectuals and intelligentsia of all the communities, especially the two warring communities, will have to sit together and share their grievances. They should have to work together to demonstrate a shared common perspective and commitment to restore normancy and stability in the state of Manipur. Therefore, the need of the hour is to disarm the armed cadre who are involved in looting the sophisticated arms and ammunition from the police armories. It is remarkably noted that mere appeal to those armed cadres to return the sophisticated weapon will not work. Concerted and deliberate operations will have to be launched coupled with incentive for those who voluntarily surrender. The role of the youths from all the communities in solving the current mahim of Manipur are quite significant. They should be invited for talks as they are crucial for the restoration of normancy and peace in the state itself. It is quite possible to say that peace and stability in the state would be returned at a faster scale if the youths take a significant, serious role in this ethnic violence. An NRC updating process should be given an essential priority tax in Manipur. Such a tax should be taken up after consulting with all the stakeholders of all the communities in the state of Manipur. Otherwise, it will bring more and more chose crisis and disasters in the state of Manipur. An initiative plan of registered of indigenous inhabitants of Manipur on the line of the Register of Indigenous Inhabitants of Nagaland should be set up to solve the problem of illegal migrants and to identify the indigenous or native or ep origins people in the state. Further, it should be linked with the ILPS guidelines. A very warm good morning to everyone. May I am Punamapun no Lukpamadikai Kumnabuchari, Nasigas Kumlaba Musuna Sinba today. National Youth Convention Sigi, Team Democracy, Dialogue and Coexistence in Manipur Gi, Marisuba Tankaki, Equate the Piriva, the way forward. Asiga Marie Linana, Aigueva, Suggestion Major Singh, Present on Navagi Tanja, Pivi, the Makta Nolupum, the Kai Konabucha, Bagaluna, and a moderator, Bohan Makta, the Ikai Konabuchari, Dai Stelling Sin Biriva, distinguished. Panelist Singh, Aigimang de Ling Sinbiriva, Professor Singh, Academician Singh, my brothers and sisters, Nasige Yutki present Uyba Mawongsi Uraga. We are very serious to deal with this present ethnic violence and we are ready to move forward. 
Today we take pride in our unique identity while cherishing our multicultural, multi ethnic issues. Politics and Manipu must acknowledge and reflect the reality of our diverse population. Ethnicity plays a significant role in shaping political dynamics, although other factors like religion, economic, education, and, and ideology also bind our communities. To move forward, understanding negotiation, negotiating discussion, the, the demands of different ethnic groups within the framework of democracy is essential. Regrettably, violence has become deeper, deeply ingrained in our Manipur's politics and tronies our collective physique. Dialogue and negotiation should be our chosen path, but violence has unfortunately taken or become a means to expressing our political demand. We must explore ways to live peacefully with re without resorting to any sort of violence. It is an unknown fact that the Maitai community comprises of 53% of the total population of the state. Other minorities communities such as Nagas, Kukis, the Maitai Pangans represent 24%, 16% and 8.4% of the state's representations, respectively. Till now, based on the available evidences, this communal violence or ethnic violence, in other words, killed more than 180 people, wounded more than 400, and displaced closely 60,000 people in the whole state. It is extremely sad to see the loss of many innocent lives and property owing on the ongoing inter ethnic classes between the Maitai and the Kuki Jo community in Manipur. The immediate cause of this raising communal crisis, as widely alleged, seemed to be the order of the Manipur High Court directing the Manipur state government to submit its recommendation to include the Maitai community in the scheduled tribe list. Regarding the present serious and brutal inter-ethnic crisis in Manipur, I am compelled to bring up some significant issues to be addressed urgently as part of the way forward policies, suggestion, suggestive measures, and the same are laid down below for immediate restoration of normalcy and peace in the state. Suggestive measures, the way forward policies. We come to the crucial question, but we shall not hesitate to answer it un equivocally and to say that separation, which is the only solution to this heinous ethnic violence as allegedly claimed by the tribal Kuki Joe people may invite more and more chose and cleavage and may create problematic towards the majority people of this state. Some allegedly claim that no other solution of the problem is possible. Some palliative may serve the purpose temporarily, but unless the problem is solved in a statesman-like way, it will worsen the position and create greater cleavage between the tribal Kukijo community and the Manipuris, especially the Maitai community, resulting in the disintegration of northeastern part of India. The first point is Manipur's population as per census figure since 1951 and 1901. Manipur's total population in 1951 was 5,77,635, consisting of 3,47,325 Hindus, 68,394 Christians, and 37,197 Muslims. In 2011, the corresponding figures were 28,55,791 total population out of which 11,81,876 were Hindus, 11,79,043 are Christians, and 2,39,836 are Muslims. In 2011, 
compared to 2001, the Muslim growth was minus 0.4%, whereas the Christian growth was 7.3%. For comparison, Christians grew 34% in 2001, where as Muslim grew 8.8% compared to 1991 Manipur's total population increases 4.94 times during 1951 to 2011. was slightly higher than that of Hindus, 3.4 times, lower than Muslims, 6.45 times. But Christian increased 17.24 times, almost 3.5 times of total population increased. Since 1901, Manipur's population has increased 10 times. Therefore, the population commission of all the communities residing in the state must be established so as to enable the state to identify the illegal or legal migrants or immigrants in the state. Until and unless there is a population commission, it would not be possible to identify all those illegal or legal migrants and immigrants in the state. Such a mechanism should be established in the state of Manipur on a priority basis. Number two, it is very much necessary to take prompt and timely action for immediate restoration of peace in the state while concerning the present ongoing ethnic crisis in Manipur based on the flight of the people grappled with the grab situation in the state. Number three, the territorial integrity of the state of Manipur should be maintained at all costs. As a supporter of the BJP lit government in Manipur, I please that our party will, will not compromise on the territorial integrity of the state. Number four, no separate administration should be allowed at all cost in response to demand of any particular ethnic community. Any workable disruptions <laughs> while concerning the state's territorial integrity should not be allowed. However, the tribal Cookie Joe community strongly allegedly claimed that the recent state sponsor ethnic cleansing program has irrefutably shown both to the nation and to the world that the tribals in particular, the Cookie Joe people and the Maitis can no longer live together peacefully under one administration. Historical evidence shows that there have always been ups and downs while concerning the relationship between the tribals and the Maite in the state of Manipur during the pre-colonial, colonial and post-colonial period as clearly revealed in the Saitaron Kumapa, the Royal Chronicle of Manipur and other Puyas also. It is recorded in the Saitaron Kumapa that as a part of the subjugation of tribes staying in southeastern hills, King Mungyamba who ruled during 1562 to 1597 AD, defeated Tosen village of 100 houses by capturing their chief, Nashilo. He defeated the Moyan tribesmen and Gaels, Mithun, were taken as booties. Many villages, including Chakpa and Ningzend, were captured. Unlike other villages, the Anan villages defeated the king Mugyamba, though they lost their chief, Sintoipa. Gangumai Kabui, History of Manipur Pre-Colonial Period. It is written in volume number one, National Publishing House, Delhi, 1991, page number 206. The Saitaran Kumava mentioned the fact that the house, commoners or hill people of Manipur, chased them up all the way to Macau, hitting at the stern of the boats as they chased, they looted boats at Macau. The royal sword seals and brass pots were lost Ten royal ladies died. Sarojini Nalini Arambam, had written in the court chronicles of the kings of Manipur, the Saitaron Kumaba, Volume 1. India. Suspension of operation, paid signatory cookie militant cadres should maintain the ground rules and should be restricted to their zigzagging camp at any cost. Probes should be conducted to find out whether they are involved in the killings of civilians. Border fencing, special reference to Myanmar, borders should be given a priority as it plays a crucial role for this current Mahim. It should be taken up as an immediate corrective measures. Accountability should be maintained as a part of the way forward policy for the step, normalcy and stability. In one of the webinars conducted by the Church Auxiliary for Social Action, 
In short, Casa held on August 20, 2023, Professor Sanjoy Hazarika, the well known author, scholar, researcher, filmmaker, and journalist, who is currently International Director of the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative, talk of the maintenance of accountability while dealing with the present situation in Manipur. The Grim and Saki situation indicates the accountability of police, intellect, intelligence agencies, the civil administration should be fixed. Even the media channel which has become normalized habitually to promote the red hearing from the conducive environment of their studios in the highly developed or metropolitan cities and Delhi and Seer. Reasons need to be accountable to all the people of the country. Bias and selective reporting should be erased at the root level and an in-person reporting and information should be broadcasted for the general good of people and healthy journalism. It is the need of the hour to be amenable in all the perspective regarding the reporting of this ethnic riot. Reporting should not be done to suit the interests of one particular community, but it should be engaged applicably in the interests of the communities of the state of Manipur. Different layers of hard decisions at the level of the center and the state government should be timely and swiftly taken up to book the defaulters as it sends any community or socio-political elegance. It should be done on an immediate basis, which should be free from a bias and prejudice. Otherwise, it would further create any grip cleavage between the two communities on a wider scale. A collective effort consisting of all the stakeholders should be established or set up as way forward policy for this ethnic violence. It is quite clear that the ruling outfit, the ruling outfit has, the, has to reach out to all the political parties in the aim of projecting a political unity of purpose as the national security is at stake. All the civil society organizations, retired civil and defense personnel, academicians, intellectuals, and intelligentsia of all the communities, especially the two warring communities, will have to sit together and share their grievances. They should have to work together to demonstrate a shared common perspective and commitment to restore normancy and stability in the state of Manipur. Sheikh, your time is going to be over, so. I will take a few more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to. Okay, okay. This but armament, this armament should be calculatedly projected in any society. A society which has weapons lead to a sure receipt for catastrophe. Therefore, the need of the hour is to disarm the armed cadre who are involved in looting the sophisticated arms and ammunition from the police armories. It is remarkably noted that mere appeal to those armed cadres to return the sophisticated weapon will not work. Concerted and deliberate operations will have to be launched coupled with incentive for those who voluntarily surrender. The role of the youths from all the communities in solving the current mahim of Manipur are quite significant. They should be invited for talks as they are crucial for the restoration of normancy and peace in the state itself. It is quite possible to say that peace and stability in the state would be returned at a faster scale if the youths take a significant, serious role in this ethnic violence. It is also remarkably important to mention the point that a transparent, energetic, and spirited, unified common structure, which is applicable to all the communities, will work and figure out to root out the state of Manipur from the current chores. The issues of religion in this current mayhem should not be thus at it will to the part of catastrophic and destructive perspective in all angles, political, economy, social, and educational. It should be washed away the psychosocial damage that has caused its shadow on the minds of children will need to be whiffed out through a well-planned strategy at the school and college level. The strategic way or plan should be chalked out a faster pace. An NRC updating process should be given an essential priority tax in Manipur. Such a tax should be taken up after consulting with all the stakeholders of all the communities in the state of Manipur. Otherwise, it will bring more and more chose crisis and disasters in the state of Manipur. An initiative plan of registered of indigenous inhabitants of Manipur 
on the line of the Register of Indigenous Inhabitants of Nagaland should be set up to solve the problem of illegal migrants and to identify the indigenous or native or app origins people in the state. Further, it should be linked with the ILPS guidelines, which were officially implemented since January 1, 2020. In this section at close I, mention all indigenous persons and permanent residents are exempted. In this context, the government of Manipur has mentioned the list of the indigenous communities and permanent residents by marking the 1961 as the base year. However, the problem is about the base year as there is no document for 1961 base year. This base year is highly conjunctious and debatable one amongst the scholars, ethnographers, historians, sociologists, and political scientists of the state. It is noted that there were two previous drafts of the inner line permit system called the Manipur Regulation of Non-Local People Act 2016 and the Protection of Manipur Population People's Bill 2015, which talk of 1972 and 1951 as best year. However, if such a tax is implemented in the right time and right hour, it will at least whip out the perplexed issues between the tribal Kukijo communities and Maiti community in future. Another way forward policy is about the amendment of Manipur Land Reform Act 1960. There should be whipping out of the exclusive policy of the minorities, especially the Maitai Pangan in the state. Inclusive policies should be implemented in Manipur. Besides the Manipur Pedi Land Conservation Act of 2014 should be thoroughly enforced in the whole state. Otherwise, it would create more and more power flexist. Lastly, a proportion and representation of all political, educational, economic, and social affairs consisting of all the groups, including the minority, Maitai Pangan community should be set up on a priority basis in the state. It should be taken up as an immediate corrective measures. It should be observed in job vacancies in all the institutes of Manipur. The net of an hour is to fill up backlog vacancies of the communities in all the re respective institutes. In the light of the above mentioned points, suggest or uh, suggested measures for forward to or, or the way forward policies for the current Mayhem, it is much necessary to set up these corrective measures in the wake of this current choice. It is widely understood that as a nation, the geostrategic dimension of prolonging this standoff will severely dent our national security and the national interest. Let us work out the solution that we will neither fall prey on the divisive based advocate layout of any prejudice reporting of media nor normalize any hostile and doubtful components to push their alienating plot down our throats. But it is Manipur or anywhere else in the country or the nation or the world or the universe. We should positively hope that a lasting, peaceful, harmonious, free of bloodless situation can be seen in Manipur as early as possible without the hindrance and obstruction. Thank you very much. Uh, next, I will request uh, Sheikh Nurul Hassan, Honorable MLA, to give a brief reply to each of the qu queries that has been raised to him. Honorable question, see, immoral politics in a Quigi was it to a ying ying tan of a give him silla kiver knee and a massage him a tang the career. I give him what labor no in hangay. I know he's an ingbody being a politician or in any given profession and field, one has to maintain the highest level of moral ground. I do not want to comment on others, but I want to make my position very clear and loud. I want to end the answer in this. Aduga, ani subada, kwege state government se da, kwege party, National People's Party se initiative kaya lobo ude kari ge tumina lairi wano government se na kari kari stand lauri hai wana ching ba question lai. National People's Party, kwege party, the second largest political party in the state that supports the government from outside. initiative We are the first political party from this very state who met 
During this four months, Mahim with the Union Home Minister, we raised very basic and pertinent issues. We talked with him, we brought to his knowledge, and we take assurance repeatedly on separate administration, on territorial integrity. We have been giving our suggestion to this present government, and the present government is also working tirelessly to bring normancy and peace. One cannot deny, though it still failed, but the level of trying is still going on. This must I want to admit here. Aduga ahum suba question, sina kwege present government si accountable uye na khanbra na tragana accountable uye de na lowra in hange aduga illegal immigrants sing sina maram warga kwege yelhau mi sing da landa saklaga sukyam na chau na ke dorab da tumin na kari ke lairi bano uye na hange ayu hangs ayu na hizen ing bade hairi bai kwege a quick international border, border with Myanmar is 400 kilometers long, porous border. Higher border is the NSIP, PJ, the population. 1901, the Giho Ragana, 2001, forward the, I have the demography, the changes came like a percentage wise. I remember case it's a prolonged, it's a chronic disease. We cannot solve at one go. But we have to start an initiative and through proper measures we can deal with illegal immigrants or illegal migrants problem. For that I have already laid down my suggestive measures during my talk. Aduga, government is not silent. Government is doing every possible means and ways to find a sustainable solution. You may felt that I am saying because we are a part of this government. No. To be very honest, the government is trying. But there are in politics, in politics, Whatever we talk or whatever we say in a closed room, it cannot be implemented immediately. It takes time. The process, the implementing part or the policy part, it takes time. And state government is sincere. I will not say that it is not sincere. But we have to see where we have come, the point of no return means mistrust is so much, so high that I can't or we can't express in words. Because of which we are still facing this violence and hopefully that we will see peace in coming this. Because poppy, poppy cultivation se ho zikse mai mai log pa matam yoksal le hai. Masi ki distraction to unna na va sarkar ke kari policy lay bano hai. Ana I would refer this question to the state government because I am not the official spokesperson of the government. Aduga mari suva question se na se tha mari hele masi ai khum krava maale. Policy has stated that the policy has been given. I think I have answered this question. In 2030 years, the population has been exploited. And I think I have laid down in my talk very minutely and detailed. In 2030 years, the population has been exploited. And I think I have laid down in my talk. I will say MLR Act, we have to amend, we have to implement the 2014 conservation of the land. And we have to see, we have to observe 10 scheduled. We have to check and we have to discuss 
consult and we have to pressurize the central government because it is the parliament at the end of the day that can amend ten scheduled. It is not the state government. The state assembly can only take a resolution. We can send our recommendation, but our recommendation or our suggestion may not be accepted. But we need to build a consensus on it. And uh, after 20, 30 years, for that, ST demand committee, ST status demand reservation We felt the land is the biggest question mark. And we feel that if we get ST status, then we can expand because population is growing, but land is not growing. Where we will go and settle? This is the biggest question of the hour. And we have to answer this through proper process and the policy. And hopefully, the government of the day will definitely come off with a proper policy and definitely will do whatever possible for the common agenda. Thank you. This were my questions.